assalamu alaikum dear students so in previous lecture we have derived our equation number 5 this is our equation number 5 you can see so if we move toward our previous lecture if we talk about our previous lecture uh, which was of uh, non uniform electric field it was of varying electric field with respect with respect to position okay not with respect to time but uh, this was 2.4 and in 2.5 we are talking about time varying electric field so the equation we have derived at the last was this equation v of y okay let's say this is v of y is equals to e of x plus this this and we name this v of y equal to v of e which was equal to this term okay so now this the v of e was the variation along y axis was the drift velocity electric field drift velocity of electric field uh, along y axis you say because of y axis average velocity of y but now when you apply the varying time electric field time varying electric field when you have applied you have we have a change we have some additional terms now with v of x and with v of y this simply was the case for this simply v of y is equals to v of e for varying electric field with respect to position but when it is also with respect varying with respect to time we have this extra term in v of y v y double dot have this extra term and this extra term is now called v of e and the extra term in v of x is called v of p okay this v of p is arising because of time varying electric field let's talk about how let's name, name this as v p and v e so this is equals to vp and this one equals to ve so let's talk about vp and let's say that how it only arises when we have time varying electric field so uh, first we have to write out the formula for this let's write our formula Uh, you can see that v of p is equals to plus minus iota omega e of x over omega c b of z. Okay, this is the formula. Okay, now you know that e of x dot. You said that e of x is equals to e not e iota omega. and e of x not you said e of x not is equals dot is equals to this iota omega e of x okay so from this equation if you put this value like this and you can put this one here and you can write this as vp is equals to plus minus e x dot over omega c b e x dot over omega c b now you can see that if i rewrite this equation okay this equation i'm going to write again will be like this v of p this equation here will be equals v of p is equals to plus minus 1 over omega z b this term omega c b and partial by partial t of e of x this e x dot is equals to partial by partial t of e of x now you can see from this equation which i have derived is showing that this e is time varying if it is not varying with respect to time 
then this term will be 0 and overall v of p will be 0. More we will discuss more this in, in, in a separate topic of polarization drift. So it's enough for you to understand that why polarization also occurs when we have time varying electric field. So this is the reason this is the equa this equation tells us why whenever the electric field is time varying we have a polarization drift. We already discussed V of E electric uh, field electric drift. So now putting this and this in equation 4 and 5 right V of P here and uh, V of E here in equation 4 and 5 we will have equation 6 and 7 like this. So this is equation 6 and this is equation 7. If you think if you try to remember your previous lectures so we've made some characteristic equations and from that characteristic equation we I've wrote uh, uh, some auxiliary equations and from that auxiliary equations I found some relations just like that like same case like that in previous cases we don't have this v of p and v of y okay we have a coupled equation when we decouple them we got an equation like this okay we don't have this extra term here okay so these terms are like to be are like this you can see so if i put my duster here or like this here so these were the terms previously now because of non you can say that non uniform electric field time varying electric field we have some extra terms the x the solution of that extra term is this okay the solution of that extra term is this v of x minus v of p here it was no when we have when we don't have any v of x in the solution in the question let's say in the characteristic equation we don't have any v of v of when we don't have any v of p in the characteristic equation we don't have any v of p in the auxiliary equation or we can say we don't have any v of p in its solution now as we have v of p here we will put a v of p here also and this v of p will be equal to the same value v perpendicular e iota omega c t okay this term is same as before but this term is an additional okay so from this we can say that v of x is now having some additional v of p naming this as equation number 8 and now from equation number 8 when we will take the time derivative of this equation we will see that v of x dot is will be equal to this term this omega c iota omega ct comes here and the vp dot and taking another derivative again we are going to derivate this equation when we will again derivate this equation we will have an equation like this naming at as equation number nine so now we have to put a value of vp double dot okay we have to find out the value of this vp double dot and for the finding this value we will write the formula of polarization drift so this polarizing drift will be equal is equal to this term from this equation so now you can see that when we'll take when we go when we are going to take the derivative of this vp dot we will have this equation iota omega e x dot putting the value of now what we are going to do we are going to put this value e x dot is equals to e x iota omega okay from our first equation in the on my first page the equation which i've showed you is was this equation from this equation putting e x dot equal to this and uh, v p dot will be equal to this term now you can see that this whole factor if you separate this first term plus minus iota omega with this e of x over omega c b you will again make this v of p this term is v of p and iota omega this one iota omega is taken out okay 
so this will make iota omega and this is equals to v of p so again when we will take the v p double dot it will make iota omega v p dot okay so putting the value of this v of p again again this value in this equation above equation in this so it will make iota omega v of p iota omega will multiply with this iota omega and it will make iota omega square and this iota omega square vp is the value of vp double dot iota square is equals to minus omega square v of p you might have been thinking that this is omega c and this is omega what is the difference between omega and omega c so when you apply an electric field okay so omega is the natural frequency of electric of electric field okay natural frequency of electric field the frequency with which it is varying okay the number of cycle you you know we, we told you that it is varying electric field is varying sinusoidally okay our diagram was like this so electric field is varying in this direction it is x this is y and this is z and this was the magnetic field we have applied so it is varying sinusoidally so it will make a cycle okay so it will have any cycle like you, we know that sinusoidal waves have cycle and these sinusoidal this is the frequency omega is the frequency of this electric field and the omega c is the frequency of cyclotron is cyclotron frequency which we know is equals to q b over m okay so this is the difference between omega and omega c so we have made ourselves clear that what omega is when and what omega c is so now we have found a relation for v p double dot is equals to iota omega c putting this value in equation number nine here we will have another equation equal to this when we put vp the value of v of p double dot in equation 9 we will have this equation so now from this equation this equation we are going to put v perpendicular e iota omega c t equal to this term v of x minus v of p from equation number a so from equation a putting this value we, are, we will get this factor and multiplying this and then taking v of p common from here here we will have these are the simple steps we will have in equation number 10 okay so now similarly as we've solved equation this equation we solved equation number 8 and we got a solution like this equation number 10 by solving equation 8 and putting the value of v of p we got this equation similarly when we will solve this equation equation number 5 we will put v of v y double dot is equal to this term and we are going to find out the value of v of y and it will be equal to this term okay v y double dot equals to minus omega c this v of x will be replaced by v of y and v of p will be replaced by v of e you simply rem remember them a equation is still enough and uh, no need to do anything else just remember that v of x is replaced by v of y and v of p is replaced by v of v because x polarization is taking place along x and uh, v of e electric drift is taking along electric field drift is taken along y so these are the two equations which we have derived okay so now we have to compare we already have derived some equation of v of x double dot and v of y double dot does these equation are similar to those equation let's find out okay so first equation we already have are like this equation 6 and 7 vx double dot is equals to this term and v y double dot is equal to this term but 
our this equation 10 and 11 are not similar to equation 6 and 7. Now what we will do? You have to think that how can we make these equation 10 and 11 equal to this equation 6 and 7. Hmm? So we can say that when this equation 10 in this equation 10 you can see when this omega c is very large when this omega c is very large i am going to write this equation and solve for, for you that uh, when this v of x let me write the equation first this v of x is equals to vx double dot is equals to minus omega c v of x plus omega c square minus omega square v of p here's the equation okay so now i say that this omega c is very large okay when this omega c is very large let's say that it is thousand as compared to this omega omega is 0.1 okay let's say 0.1 so when this factor 1000 minus 0.1 is nearly equal to 1000 okay so this value is so large as compared to this value so omega c will be so large so that omega c square minus omega square will be congruent to omega c square now putting this condition in above equation vx double dot equals to minus omega c square v of x plus only omega c square v of p now if i take minus omega c common omega c square common i will have v of x minus v of p v of x double dot so now if we look in our equation number six now our equation number six is same this equation six is same as our this equation okay they both are same equation six and this equation is same now yes they are so what we have done is that when omega c so from that we can say that when omega c becomes very large this is the condition when equation 10 and 11 becomes equal to equation 6 and 7 then we can say that this whole condition satisfies because when they are equal then we can say that it is satisfying our condition and what was our condition our condition was that where we've started let me see from this from this equation i've told you now this was the equation basic equation was this as this equation is equal to when i take the derivative of this equation is this this means that v of x is equals to this term when omega c is very large okay so now you understand what i am trying to say and you understand and we have derived our equation which we have to drive in f sense book okay so which was our derivation let's see we have to drive v of p we already derived it now the term what we are, we are going to drive is this is the current density for the polarization okay the polarization current density in my next lecture i am going to drive this polarization current density so watch my next lecture and uh, till that thank you very much for your time and assalamu alaikum